Hello guys and welcome to the Good Against Evil tournament for BFU Mito, the Rise of the Witch King with a cash prize of $180. Every single game is currently being broadcasted on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. I would love to meet you guys in my next live stream as well. Check me out if you haven't done it yet. Before further ado, let's get the video started, shall we? Alrighty. Um, yeah. It's a nice matchup, Morde against Man of the West. I like this matchup the most because it's more like movie like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you know, it's like the movie. I love it. Okay, we have the blue model player, Les Lottie at the bottom side. Against the red Man of the West player, DJ at the top side. This is the map, Force of Eisen. And yeah, you know, guys, Force of Eisen is the most played map in all battles for Middle Earth games. But great news! Uh, we have a format in the tournament which means we won't see any map twice in a series. And the finals is gonna happen. Uh, the Grand Finals is gonna happen this Sunday at uh, potentially 8 p.m. GMT plus one on my Twitch channel. And again, I would love to meet you guys in my live stream as well. Two slot houses are coming up into the Arc Pits for the model player Les Lottie. On the other side, we see two farms from the Man of the West player. Into poten oh, it's gonna be a stable, forward stable actually, from the Man of the West player. Okay, I see it. Uh, we're gonna have two Arc Pits coming up now for Les Lottie. And yeah, Morda got buffed this patch, kinda. I mean, the Orc Pit got buffed, the Orcs got buffed in the current patch, which is the 2.02 version 8.4. The Orcs now are able to deal 25% more damage, and they also cost 10 command points less. So they now cost only 30 command points, they used to cost 40 instead. With that being said, Morda is now gonna be able to get a lot of Orcs on the field, even when his command points are low, which is a significant buff if you ask me. Okay, two slaughterhouses, two production buildings. And he's now gonna build the third slaughterhouse right after. Uh, that's gonna be a nice start with the Gondor Knight. I like it. He was also building now the third farm, as you can see in the backside. Normally, we see like three farm farms uh, max actually around the fortress. Because you wanna, in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, build your farms so you get some money from them. If you build them next to each other, um, you don't get any money. But sometimes we see that actually in the later stages of the game, just because the players are trying to boost their uh, command points limit. Because the farms, unlike in BFME 1, are not only giving you money over time, but also they are increasing your command points. 50 when they are level 1, 75 when they are level 2, and 100 when they are level 3. The Gondor Knight is not gonna be a stable delete, so he's gonna keep getting more Gondor Knights on the field eventually. The Oryx, they can't withstand the damage of the mighty Gondor Knights from the Men of the West faction. The Oryx are being here used for, um, you know, body blocking obviously. But it's fine, because if you can buy time like this with your Oryx, it's absolutely fine. Because he's now building up the Haradrim Palace to get some Easter Links on the field. Which are pretty much like a counter unit to the Gondor Knights. And he needs them on the field now. The Moro player haven't, uh, didn't choose any power points just yet from the Spellbook. The Man of the West player starting with the Rallying Gold, which is the War Chant from the Evil Faction. 50% more damage boost and 50% more armor boost. But so far, DJ wasn't able to kill any of these slot houses just yet. There are just too many orcs to deal with. And he's doing a nice job by the blocking um, and blocking the enemy move, you know, enemy units' movement speed in this case, which is quite nice. Because if you trample down too many units at the same time, you're gonna lose a lot of movement speed. And also the fortress is doing a nice job defending. As well as the second Gondor Knight is arriving now at the opposite side of the map from the Man of the West player DJ. And he's now building up the um, barracks and the archer range at the same time. So we're gonna have potentially all the types of units from the Man of the West faction, from Gondor Knights, to soldiers, to pikemen and also to archers later on. But I'm assuming that's still not a bad start for the Mordor player, because Mordor is a scaling faction, guys. Mordor is a monster, just like in Give Me One, also in Rise of the Witch King in the late game. And in order to reach the late game, you need to make sure to keep your Slaughterhouse is protected as long as you possibly can. Very, very important. And with the Easter Links, you can easily deal with the Skonda Knights. And DJ, again, wasn't able to even kill one of the Slaughterhouses so far. And he is still sitting on his um, Rallying Call, which is still available, guys. And the model player is starting with the Eye of Sauron. And he's pushing forward. There is a statue coming up for the Man of the West player, which is gonna give him 10 command points, but also leadership. 33% damage and uh, armor but also 50% increased combat experience. That means the units are gonna level up 50% faster. And uh, the important thing here is that this is able to stack with the Rallying Call. So you can have the leadership and the buff from Rallying Call active at the same time. That's it. Like the buff system in Rise of the Witch King is pretty straightforward. Unlike in BFME 2, it's not very complicated to understand. 
you can have only one buff and one leadership available at the same time. And there are uh, there are other things like spells, for example. Spell, for example, can be the mighty rage from King Dane with level five or level four. I'm sorry. And also spells like uh, the Horde bonus, which can always stack alongside with the darkness, for example, from the spellbook from the Goblin faction. So you can have them active all the time. They are also able to stack with each other. Uh, you can stack two darkness at the same time. You can stack two mighty rage at the same time. But you can stack the spell with the other spell and with the leadership and even the buff. So you can make your units really, really strong. But unlike in BFME 1, you don't you won't get the chance to get these high numbers. You know, in BFME 1, you can literally have 400% damage boost. <laughs> which is quite insane if you ask me. Alright, the farm has been taken down. And actually, this is looking great for the modern player so far. The statue in the front side is going to be taken down as well. Easterlings are fighting against soldiers. But I'm assuming he has just too many units at this point. But once the Easterlings are dead, the Gondor Knights are able to clean up, as you can see. Beautiful trample. Orcs are buffed, but they are still orcs, you know. 25% of nothing is still nothing, as you guys know. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but still. Like, 25% sounds crazy if you ask me. But I feel like they have 5 damage, and 25% of 5 is like still 1 extra damage, which is not a game-changing buff for the Moto Faction, by all means. However, this buff from the Moto Faction made the Moto quite effective against the Goblins. And unfortunately, we don't have any goblins, uh, any goblin players in the current tournament for the put against evil in BFME 2, the rise of the Witch King so far. Uh, the only evil factions we have are either Mordor, uh, Engma, and Isengard. That's it. Okay. The Man of the West players grouping now with a bunch of units in the middle. He has no pikemen around this side. Radran Palace is level 2, and we have already some lancers on the field. And with the lancers, and the fact that Man of the West player has zero counter to these lancers should be easily able to defend himself. It's a very greedy and risky move from DJ if he moves forward just like that. In the, in the meantime, also the model playing Les Lottie is creeping the work lane at the top left side. And yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like now it's gonna be Fiesta. A beautiful trample, no counterplay, nothing that can burst down these lancers in time. Even though the Man of the West player is doing a nice job clumping quite nicely, but it's absolutely fine for Moro if he can keep the fight outside of his own side of the map and again Mordor's early game early game goal is to survive to keep those lot houses protected and if you can drag the fight out into the middle of the map you know like he does it's actually perfect and he will be even able to defend himself quite nicely but on the other side he was also forced to go for the war chant to be able to get the damage boost and armor boost he needs in order to win this fight the Gondor Knights, they are badly damaged, um, but the good thing and the positive thing about um, good factions in BFME games is that they have a well and they will have to sustain which evil factions don't. Uh, evil factions, they can only sustain over time when they are level 2 or higher with the normal units. I mean, heroes, as we guys know, are able to heal up over time anyway, but it's about the, about the units. And the units, when they are level 1, they have no sustain, they have no, re no regeneration, unlike Men of the Westerns, Elves, elves too. But also the uh, Dwarven faction with the well. 550 command points available for the Mordor player. Almost 5 power points collected after the War Chance and the Eye of Sauron. Leadership buff is able to stack, like mentioned at the beginning of the game. Uh, one Lancer was able to survive. The good thing for the Mordor faction is that he can purchase the Banakiri upgrade from a level 1 Orc with guys. And it only costs you 400 resources. Maybe it's actually not bad to go for that. Because if you don't know, the Orcs, they have a Bloodthirst ability, which will also be unlocked with level 2. It's a passive ability, which is going to increase their damage by additionally 25%. Gonna make them quite strong. But again, Orcs are still Orcs. <laughs> Unlike the Black Orcs, they are quite strong. They are quite strong. They are very, very strong, actually. One of the one of the better swordsmen in the game, definitely. 4 power points away from a potential industry. 10 power points are going to be needed for that. Industry is even more powerful in Rise of the Witch King than it is in BFME 1. It's gonna boost your resource income from selected slaughterhouse, but you can only use it on one actually by 300%, guys. It's crazy. And that's gonna help Moro big time to reach the power spike uh, to get the strong units on the field, like Felbees, for example, for example, later on. Even the Witch King can be recruited, but also units like Haradrim Arches from the Haradrim Palace level 3, Trolls, Muma Kills. As we know, Mordor has lots of choices uh, for strong units. And uh, if you unlock the full potential from the Mordor faction, I think you're gonna be unmatched in the latest stages of the game. Okay? Pikemen are uh, not in position. He could be going for a trample, but he's not risking the biscuit. 
Now the archer range is level 2. We're gonna get to see some of the Italian rangers now, which are the elite archers from the Men of the West faction. The power points are rising. Warchan is almost back up. Eye of Sauron is still on cooldown. And big clumped army, by the way. The Easter Links are doing a nice job. We have Aomi on the field for the sports. Rallying Call is gonna be used from the Men of the West play. The power points are rising from no other player. Less lot, yeah. He has not enough power points collected for the industry. But he has units everywhere, as you can see. Industry is gonna be unlocked now and used immediately, potentially, on this lot house here. This is the slaughterhouse you want to use it on, because look at the protection of this one. The orc pits around as well as the Haradrim Palace, so it's going to be hard for the Man of the West player to commit against this one. And uh, Leslothi is doing a nice job keeping the fight outside of his own side of the map, which is very, very important in this matchup. Because as Moro, again, you want to survive, you want to scale, you want to get strong. And uh, offense is most of the time the best defense. However, you also want to make sure that you have something to protect your own side of the map. Like some Easterlings potentially, because right now he has nothing to keep those slaughterhouses protected against the Skonda Knights and Eomir. Eomir has level 1 leadership with the Horse Lord, which, you know, leadership in Rise of the Witch King is always the same. 33% damage, armor and 50% increased combat experience. Regardless what hero it is, what building it is, you always have the same stats when it's, when it's a leadership. And you have the same stats when it's a buff. 50% damage and 50% armor, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, they shouldn't be able to take down this farm. Longshot is going to be able to save the day. The Slaughterhouse level 2 is going to be taken down. Eomir has to be careful. He's taking way too much damage here from the Easterlings. Mounted heroes like Eomir are very vulnerable against Pikes. And he has to, you know, use the heal now in order to get away with Eomir, who is now level 4. And that's a massive power spike for the Horse Lord of Rohan. And the new king of the Theorian's death in the movies. Um, because that unlocks his outlaw leadership. Which means money, money, money every time he kills Yunus. Depends what kind of units you kill. You get only one gold for killing one orc from the battalion. But that's fine. Because you will kill countless orcs in this game. And uh, you get more money when you kill Easterlings. You get more money when you kill Lancers. You get more money when you kill heroes. So depends what you're killing. You will get money based on the cost of the enemy unit you're killing. If this makes sense for you guys. 675 command points available for the model player. 5 power points collected after the eye, war chant and industry. On the other side, we have only 525 command points collected. Eomir is on the field level 4. He's gonna give him the chance to get some more money over time. That is the uh, Lone Tower summon defensively from the Spellbook of the Man of the West faction. And the Gondor player now has to respect... Oh, there is a Felvis, alright. Camul is on the field, guys. And Camul is nice here because uh, you can use them to deal with the Gondor Knights all the time. Like you will do now. Look at this. Booyah. <laughs> Knock them down. And look at the money Eomir is able to get with the outlaw leadership from killing this many orcs. But the uh, Gondor Knights are getting slowed down by trampling down this many units. He's gonna lose many, many more Gondor Knights. The Thalbis Camul is also, unlike in BFMU1, able to get dismounted as a, as a hero on foot. Uh, which I would recommend you to do if you wanna deal with the Rangers. But you can always avoid fighting the Rangers and actually use the Thalbis for map control fights instead. And try to protect your own side of the map against the Gondor Knights with Eomir. I think that's what his purpose is going to be in this game against the Men of the West player, DJ. I will be used now offensively into the War Chant. Rallying Call is available from the Men of the West player. He might be forced to use it defensively. He has to now move with the Gondor Knights and also the Rangers. It's an Orc army. Uh, they're gonna get trampled down from this Gondor Knights and Eomir. No big deal. And again, money, money, money. Look, that's what I was talking about. You get countless amounts of money. Because you kill countless amount of orcs 24-7. At some point of the game, the model player has, go, has to go for a transition into stronger units because orcs, alone, orcs all alone are not going to be able to win you the game at this point. And look at this. You see, that's, you know, plus one. Don't underestimate that. Because you get so much money, you know, it's for one unit only. And one battalion has already so, so many units. And he was killing, I think, a bunch of units. We have now Faramir joining the battlefield, guys. One of the captains of Gondor. And the brother from Boromir. And the son of Denethor. Who, I don't, I feel bad for this guy. I feel... Guys, let me know in the comment section below if you also feel bad for Faramir. Uh, imagine you are him, you know. Your father doesn't like you. He wants to send you to death. I don't know that. I don't know. Of course, he feels bad afterwards when Eomir is coming back and he actually want to burn Eomir alive. <laughs> I mean, not Eomir, sorry, Faramir alive. <laughs> and, you know, I don't need a father like this in my life. Okay? 
The Fair Beast is gonna be used for map control fights. No abilities, by the way, for the Fair Beast. Uh, only Screech, that's it. Uh, the tower is protected. There is a Tainted Line from the Mortal player, but he has nothing to commit on right now. And the second hero, uh, the second hero, sorry, for the Mortal player, Les Lottier, is Mouth of Sauron. I also feel bad for this guy, because let's be honest, this actor from this dude, from this uh, hero, had like what? Uh, two minutes in the movies and it was even cut down from the from the movie you have to watch the uncut version in order to see him at the black gate and he was just talking to Gandalf and Aragorn was slicing him you know cutting off his head just like that <laughs> so pretty pretty unfortunate for the mouth of Sauron I would like to see him combat in an actual fight against Aragorn or Gimli it would be amazing I mean uh, the thing is uh, I would like to see also more battles in Lord of the Rings you know because there was not a counter hero, if you know what I mean. Like, of course, you could count the Felbies or the Nazgûls as a counter hero, but that was there was not even an actual fight between the Fellowship members against the Nazgûls. The only time they fight against each other was actually when Aragorn was saving the Hobbits against them, and that was not even a fight. So I would like to see like a like a you know like for example Saruman was also not really fighting, you know, he was just ordering an army. Imagine if there is an enemy hero and you have like an epic fight between one of the fellowship members against the hero of the enemy. Would be awesome. I mean, I don't 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 uh, understand me wrong guys. I can't complain at all from you know about the Lord of the Ring films. I will I feel just like it would be so much better if we would have like a like a anti-hero uh, you know from Isengard or Mordor. The Witch King, for example, he, they were building him up all the time, and then he actually got killed by Eowyn in like five seconds. That's kind of disappointing, not gonna lie. Okay, we have also Black Riders now on the field camps from the Siege Works level 3. Uh, Faramir is gonna be able to slow them down with the Wandering Arrow if he uses that. It's a nice combination, by the way. Mouth of Sauron is gonna be nice with level 4 active debuff to negate the effect of the leadership from Eomir for now, but also Faramir can unlock his leadership later on once he's level 6. And the pressure is real, Moro is now pushing with catapults as well, Boromir is also on the field, okay? And Moro has no fear resistant, guys, until uh, Gothmog gets on the field and gets level 5. Skull shots, that's gonna cause fear on the enemy units, they're gonna now run into different directions, as you can see. Uh, Eomir has to be careful, Gondon Eyes, they are, you know, there are some uh, Easterlings around, they need to avoid fighting, Boromir is diving in way, way too deep, he might be in trouble, heal is available in the worst case. Black Riders in the backside, the elite units from the Mortal Faction, you are only able to recruit one of them at the same time. Tower is siege, getting siege now by this catapult from the Mortal player, Les Lottier. He has to just make sure to protect this katas and he will be good to go. Because right now there is not much that can reach out to this catapult if you position yourself nicely. Nice shot, by the way, from this cutter in the backside. Oro is disengaging for now. Boromir, once he's level 2, that's gonna unlock his Horn of Gondor. This is gonna... Uh, you know, stun the enemy units for multiple seconds, which can buy you the time you need in order to commit against this tower, against this catapult, sorry. Eomir is now level 6, again, level 4, you know, with level 4 he unlocks already everything from his powers, so every other level is still nice because you get additional HP and more melee damage, but it's not very effective. Morgomi in the mean, or Camille, that's Camille, I think he has now two Felbys on the field if I'm not mistaken, because I'm pretty sure the first one was Morgomir. So Camille is level 3 now, he was able to kill one of the farms, he has to now run, run for his life. Maybe, oh, that shouldn't be enough, right? No, he's still alive, okay. I couldn't even see his HP bar, now there it is. Uh, it was close, but not close enough. Okay, and that's the Morgomir, the second fell beast, uh, now joining the battlefield from the fortress. I would like to see Witch King much more in those kind of situations, because Witch King is more expensive, yes, but also much more impactful. Because Witch King's debuff is actually quite impactful in every stage of the game with level 2. You make the enemy units lose 33% of their damage. And on top of that, you also nullify the leadership. And the, the Black Riders, Longshot is incoming, Katas are shooting from a safe distance. Nice dodge here from Les Lottier, losing a couple of orcs is not, nothing too crazy. Horn of Conde is now available for Boromir. Um, and the Black Riders are dead, so he has to revive them. Black Riders, by the way, they cost 2,000 each, so they are quite expensive units, but also very impactful units. Easterlings are trying to defend, but the Skatas are gonna not make it out alive, and Gondor player is safe for now. Nice shot, 50 Katas. It's not about the damage they are dealing, but it's about the CC, the crowd control. 
because they are able to knock down the enemy units on the ground. In this way, the Gondor Knights are not able to move for multiple seconds. The Worm Summon from the Spellbook of the Moto Player Leslotti. You will be able to kill this level 3 farm and look at the command points, guys. 1000 command points for. Uh oh, you have Gandalf on the field. Alright, Gandalf. Gandalf the Grey. And once he's level 5, he's gonna automatically turn into Gandalf the White. That's a big difference between BFME 1 and BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. Because in BFME 1, you can get the Gandalf the White power points from the spellbook. While in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, he automatically gets to White once he's level 5. But that again means that you won't get the chance to get on your horse until you are level 4 and you have only your wizard blast. So uh, one thing is for sure, the Gandalf from BFME 1 is much more powerful than the Gandalf from BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. That's a Rohan ally summon by the way guys from the Man of the West player. There's still a decent amount of money, look his money. I mean he has a bunch of heroes on the field as Eomir, Boromir, Faramir and even Gandalf himself. And we might also see Aragorn potentially later on. And the barracks is quite slow, but he was able to save that. He has a second one, so it's not a big uh, big deal. He lost the archer range though, which means he has to build it again, and he also has to upgrade once again to level 2, if he wants to be able to recruit any more rangers. Oh, Mouth of Sauron is diving into deep. Again, mounted heroes are horrible um, against pikemen. But you have choices, you, know, you can get always dismounted. If, you know, heroes like Eomer, Theodian, Eobin, one of Gond is being used to stun the Black Riders, guys. They are now not able to move anymore. They are taking way too much damage. Nice shot with this catapults. Three catapults to rule them all. Beautiful trample. Again, level 4 is gonna be a huge power spike. The Black Riders are still not able to move. Beautiful Visa Blast from the Guns of the Grey. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Lightning Sword is gonna be used right after. Level 4 is gonna give him the chance to get mounted on his Shadow Fax, but level 5 is gonna be the true. You know, the true time for Gandalf to shine. Nice shots over and over again with the catapults against the Gondor Knights this time. Morgomi and Camille are now committing against the Gondor Knights, against the army of the Man of the West player. No Easter that available for Gandalf. Nothing that can burst down this fell beast in time. I don't know, maybe one Ning Arrow can deal some damage to them. Maybe you can one-shot this, um, you know, this Camille. He's gonna lose Faramir though to the Black Riders, Mouth of Sauron and the fell beast. Gandalf has to run for his life. Gandalf can press his U key on the keyboard, the player of Gandalf at least, and that's gonna activate the shield bubble. And that's one of the differences also between BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King or BFME 2. Uh, because in BFME 1, the shield bubble activates automatically. You have no way of actually, you know, doing it manually. Unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. You can choose the time, you know, which is, I like it more. You have to micro it. Oh, Mafa Sauron is gonna be taken down by the, by the Spike Man. 12 power points collected now, 700 command points available, some bomber deal is gonna be unlocked next from the spellbook. We have now some Haradrim archers on the field as well for the Moro player. Eomir is almost level 8, doing a nice job, getting money, money, money all the time for the Gonzo player, DJ. Uh, I see Gonzo and uh, Man of the West all the time, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> because I was casting a BFME 1 video yesterday, so I'm kinda, you know, getting back and forth to Gonzo and Man of the West all the time. Radar Marches, uh, they're gonna be nice once they are level 2, with the, with the barbed arrow shot that can deal massive damage. He also has to potentially unlock the fighter upgrade. I don't know why he's, why he's not going for that. Even though it looks like his money is not looking that great, I don't understand why, because he has, you know, industry, full command points, so his money and resource generation should be actually quite high. Yeah, the Felbys are impactful, but again, they are not really able to commit when there are too many ranges on the field. In situations like this, look how much damage they are receiving, guys. Luckily, they will be both able to survive. They've also now some Black Orcs with heavy armor, alright, from the Siege Orcs, he was getting all the upgrades. That's what uh, he was investing money into. You can also purchase uh, the heavy armor on these Haradrim Arches to make them tank here. But I need to say that upgrades in Rise of the Witch King are not as impactful as in BFME 1. Beautiful trample with the Gondor Knights. Power points are rising. Where is Gandalf when we need him though? I can't see him. Oh, Visa Plus, kind of. There he is, alright. He's small, you know? I couldn't see him. Almost level 4. Again, that's gonna give him the chance to get mounted on his Shadow Facts. The Felbies in the meantime are creeping the troll layer. Poor troll can't do anything about that. He can't even hit back. <laughs> that's unfair. Okay. 
And I think Les Lotki now has to stop sending those catapults out one by one. Plus 105 for killing one catapult because of the outlaw leadership from Eomir, which is impressive if you ask me. And he was killing a lot, you know, not only Katas, but also Easterlings are dying, Orcs are dying, Black Orcs are giving more money when you kill them than normal Orcs. And especially heroes like Mouth of Sauron or the Fairbees are gonna give real money when you kill them when Eomir is nearby. If now Gothmog on the field, the Orc hero from the Mortal Faction, Gothmog is nice. A nice counter to the fear effect once he's level 5 and unlocks the Iron Hand, um, which is giving you fear resistance. You can now also, you know, get this rubble done with this Felbis and then you can get dismounted in order to get the money from the ground. Elmi is healing up over time. Oh, we miss a beautiful Visa Blast, but there it is. Gandalf is level 4, ladies and gentlemen, and guess what? He is now on his Shadow Facts, alright? That's gonna give him the mobility he needs. This way he can always hit and run all the time. And get the levels uh, to level 7. It's gonna be a huge power spike from water with the Easter Delight. And look at that, guys. We have Aragorn, Araton's son. The King of Gonzo is joining the battlefield for the Man of the West player DJ. And now the Fellowship. The entire Fellowship is on the field pretty much. We are only missing Eovin as a hero. That's it. Black Oryx with this much leadership. Tom Bombadil will be summoned. They have a lot of... Um, they have Tainted Land, you know. Uh, they are quite strong, at, you know, in those kind of in those kind of situations. I can't even talk. Sorry for that. Lightning, uh, lightning sword is gonna be used. It's gonna cancel it. Almost level five. The power points from Mordor are rising to the sky. It's gonna now cancel it again. No, he's actually able to catch this fair beast. And Gandalf is the Slayer, guys. He's the Dragon Slayer, or he's the fair beast Slayer in this case. Level five unlocked, and then that changes his color. Look at this, Gandalf the Grey. No, 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 I'm Gandalf the White, as he would like to say. And that's a huge power spike for this Mifranzia. One of the Felbis was able to survive, it's Camille with level 5. Gothmog is also still alive, level 3. Boromir has to be careful. One of Gondor is on cooldown, and Black Riders, if you don't know, are a great counter unit to heroes. And especially with com Gothmog combination and the Felbis, who is attacking Boromir, you might be losing this hero. But there is a sport from this level 3 farms. He was also purchasing the upgrades on the fortress. And now they are able to shoot with fighter upgrades. Which is obviously more DPS. Parami is almost level 4. And the Man of the West player is still in the game, guys. He is still in the game. More Black Oryx, more Easterlings, more Archers. Uh, fighter upgrade purchased. Did he also purchase the Banner Killer upgrade? No, he didn't. Uh, he should, though. Because again, this Bloodthirsty means 25% more damage for the Black Oryx. And the level 2 for the Haradrim Arches means the Barbed Arrow Shot is gonna be unlocked. If you have many of these units on the field and you use with every single one of them the Barbed Arrow Shot against Gandalf, and he doesn't use the <coughs> Shield Bubble, he might receive quite a lot of damage. Okay, Gothmog is kinda in a bad position. Gandalf and Eomir are running him down, there is no way he can escape this. And Gof uh, Eomir is taking the revenge because Gothmog was, if you don't know, trying to kill Eowyn in the films. <laughs> and Eomir is now level almost 10, guys. Gandalf is level 6, one le level needed for unlocking the Easter Light. And yeah, man, you know, the Mortal player is kinda, kinda lost. He doesn't know what he is supposed to do in order to win this game because if you send small units, a uh, small amount of units, small, of, small groups of units at least forward, I think that's not gonna achieve too much for you because Gandalf, Aragorn, but also the other heroes from the Man of the West play DJ, they will know how to defend. I think you, what you need to do potentially is make a massive army and send them forward all together. Because Mortal player can afford it, he has so much money. So wait for the Warch and Eye of Sauron, you know, ability, and then you go. One of Gondor was used to stun the enemy units, and that's a nice wombo combo potential by the way guys if you don't know. Because you can stun them with Horn of Gonzo and go for a juicy and beautiful Wizard Blast just like that with Gandalf right after. Almost level 7, almost level 7. In the meantime, Camille can't do much more but creep the trolley at the top right side, which by the way is the last remaining creep on the map for Zavizen. The Worm Summon against the level 3 farm. Could be able to two-shot that one. The Worm is dealing crazy amount of damage to buildings. Crazy amount of damage to buildings, trust me on that one. It's going down. Oh, he was using Rebuild. Might be able to save. Uh, but I guess not, right? It's gonna still go down. Two hits are needed to burst it down from 100 to 0. Three hits if you use Rebuild. So he was doing a nice job already. Le killing a level 3 farm like that is very fine. I missed the Rain of Fire, guys. My bad. Didn't do much, I guess. The heroes are still alive. Where is Aragorn, though? I can see Aragorn. I could see him one time, but I can't see him anymore. Eomir is now level 10. 
Rohan allies will be used. No, it's a Duna. Oh, he's gonna use Rohan allies and the Ranger allies at the same time. Look at the army just from the spellbook of the Man of the West faction, just like that. The Falvis has to now try to defend, but again, it's easier said than done because there are some rangers on the field. They have leadership now from Bo uh, Boromir level 5. And they deal massive damage in combination with the Rallying Call. And we have also the army of Rohirrim with uh, Eomi and Gandalf side by side, just like in the movie The Two Towers, when they were coming to save Helm's Deep. Level 7 unlocked, Easter Light is available. Felbis is committing now. He has to be careful. Gandalf has Easter Light, he has the Lightning Sword ability available. In the meantime, we have a fight around this side. The Black Riders are committing against the Rangers, but there are too many of them. There are just too many of them, and they are being protected and being guided by these two captains of Gondor, ladies and gentlemen. Two captains of Gondor. Visa Plus is incoming potentially. There it is. Beautiful. Gandalf is indeed white, and he is shining bright like a diamond in this one for the Man of the West player. There is a Gitwatcher expansion who is gonna cause fear in the enemy units, but if you don't know, Gandalf, once he's level 5, it's a passive thing, you don't even see that here, but he's gonna offer you fear resistant. So if Gandalf is nearby, Moro can't fear the enemy units anymore. That's not possible. And Leslothian knows he can't deal with the mighty wizard, and he's gonna give up just like that. What a nice game, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And again, if you wanna see the other games coming up very soon for this tournament, Make sure to check me out on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe as well. As always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace, guys.